going to fire up the rocket stove and in a little bit try out the uh, Coleman cook stove oven on the top of this puppy just to see if uh, see how it works. Got a little pile of uh, fuel there. I'm going to let it burn down, get some coals uh, situated, and we'll check it out. So here's the setup. I have an EcoZoom rocket stove and one of the Coleman stovetop ovens. And I just wanted to see if I, uh, the combination would work together very well. We're going to try it out and see what happens. I just now set the uh, oven up on there. And as you can see, it's just now beginning to warm up. It's still reading kind of low. Check back with you in a minute. The rocket stove has heated the Coleman oven up to 350 degrees. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put the biscuits in and get started. As always, when working around campfires, cooking and everything else, you need to have lots of hot pads, lots of things to be able to handle the hot items around your stove, around your campfire safely. Uh, I actually have a pair of gloves I'm fixing to go get. I just put these in and I have the shelf set about midway through the oven just to see how it works out. Um, a quick review, the EcoZoom rocket stove I'm using works on the same principle as all other rocket stoves. You have a combustion chamber in a highly insulated container that allows the temperature to get extremely hot. That's why you don't see smoke coming out of these burning oak twigs. And the stove itself is designed to be used with any solid dry fuel, uh, sticks, split up wood, charcoal. What I've done this morning is I've gathered a bunch of sticks and I did put about four briquettes, charcoal briquettes in there just to uh, help maintain a steady, a steady burn. And I'm gonna be doing, I think hopefully most of the baking uh, with sticks that you would just normally pick up. Now the EcoZoom rocket stove is pretty solid. We carry it with us everywhere. It's actually saved us having to buy propane. Um, I've built several different varieties of rocket stoves out of everything from tin cans to buckets to blocks, you name it. And uh, I, I got this one because I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna abuse this thing, just to be honest. Uh, we're, we're gonna be cooking on this thing a whole lot. And so I wanted to uh, get something that would hold up. And so far, this one has done excellent. By using the EcoZoom, we've been able to run for almost three months on a 20 pound cylinder of propane uh, and we cook daily. Uh, anybody that follow us, go ahead, go ahead Layla. <laughs> anybody that follows us knows that we, we both like to cook and so we cook a lot. Um, but anyway, biscuits are in the oven. Temp is holding somewhere between 325 and 350. Just added a little more fuel so it'll bring it back up a little bit. So we've been about 20 minutes and I just checked the biscuits. They are just about done. I'm gonna give it another five. And the thing I'm learning with this is I can maintain a baking temperature of 350 fairly easy. 450 would be a lot harder to maintain. I just don't think there's that kind of heat. I was thinking as the oven came straight out of the box, 350 is pretty good. If I had a piece of refractory blanket or something that I could put on the top and let it drape over the sides, that would probably make 450 real easy to attain. As with all rocket stoves, you have to be careful how you load the fuel because you can choke off the amount of air going through it and that lowers the temperature in the combustion chamber, which in you know, has a direct effect of uh, lowering the temperature in the oven, but it also allows it to start producing a little bit more smoke. All right, we had to uh, swap out cameras. The battery in the other one went dead, or sorry, the storage space in the other one got full. It's been about 20 minutes, going on 25 now that I think about it. We're going to check our biscuits here in just a second. The Rocket stove is one of those things that you have to regulate the temperature, but you have to be careful at the amount of uh, fuel you shove in the opening because that can choke off the oxygen and cause the temperature to drop. So I'm going to tend to it for just a minute, and then we'll check our biscuits. All 
our navigator there is plotting our course. We're headed west after this. And, uh, except this time we're going to go south. We're not going to head west in the upper regions. Why? Because it might be cold. And let's face it, the reason for being a nomad is so that you can enjoy the weather that you want to enjoy. As you can see, I'm throwing a few little twigs in right now. My temperature dropped uh, just a few minutes ago while I was fooling with the cameras. And so I'm going to try to bring it back up pretty quick. Plus, we've picked up a really strong breeze. Another reason for, hap for perhaps a piece of refractory blanket I can lay over the top and side. Uh, temperature has been fairly stable in the oven until the good breeze started up there. And we're going to check our biscuits. I'm going to throw just a little bit in good measure. Like I said earlier, you should always have some gloves when you're fooling around cooking and hot stuff. It might make your trip a little bit more enjoyable. Pardon my backside. Let's see what our biscuits look like. Oh my, I'm thinking that's about done. What is your opinion? Yeah. All right, I'm going to set that down right there. We'll have to brush the ants off the table. So there you go. It does work using the Coleman cooktop oven with a rocket stove. Um, key, key point, you want your rocket stove to be good and hot so that you don't have any smoke. And I'm going to try to lift this thing off real quick. Look at them biscuits. As you can see, the rocket stove, when it's really fired up, produces very little smoke, even with wet green wood that we have laid around here. I just walked around and picked up whatever I could find. So there you have it. I hope to see you guys out here somewhere. Otherwise, hey, get out. Be safe and go adventure.